Purdue reached new heights in 2010 with Professor H. Nagishi receiving the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Nagishi was chosen for his work creating a method to build complex organic molecules necessary for numerous purposes, from pharmaceutical manufacturing to electronics. Nagishi shared the prize with two other chemists. And uh, I never set uh, winning the Nobel Prize my, my goal. Keep exploring in the right direction such that your accomplishment will be recognized. I hope that all young people will hold high lofty dreams and uh, pursue these dreams. Nagishi traveled to Stockholm in December to accept his share of the one and a half million dollar prize. He came to Purdue in 1966 as a postdoctoral researcher under the late Herbert Brown, who won the Nobel Prize in 1979. He estimates it's closer to 70,000 barrels a day. Another Purdue professor made a media splash this year. Engineer Steve Worley used optical feature tracking to measure the flow from the BP oil spill. He determined the flow was 10 times the size of the official figure. What we can see are uh, clouds, and so those features are traveling at the speed of the oil. Uh, and so by measuring the speed of those features, I'm able to measure the speed of the oil. The accomplishments of Purdue alumni were recognized in 2010. Chesley Sully Sullenberger was awarded the Armstrong Medal of Excellence by Neil Armstrong himself at the annual President's Council Dinner. The hero on the Hudson received the honor for safely landing a damaged jet in the river, saving 155 passengers and crew. The recipient of the Neil Armstrong Medal of Excellence, Captain Sully Sullenberger, is a fellow member of the Pilots Who Land in Strange Places Club. <laughs> And most importantly, the kind of person which Boilermakers hold in the very highest esteem. The events of January 15, 2009 absolutely were not only the result of the actions of a single person. Now, without the contributions of many, we likely could not have had the same outcome. I have been informed officially by the FAA that after the water landing, if I were to do it just two more times, I'd get my seaplane rating. <laughs> On the field to make the presentation is Special Boilermaker honorees for 2010 were mechanical engineering professor Charles Crosgrill and industrial engineering professor James Barony, both for improving the student educational experience. If you learn one song by the end of this camp, it's going to be Hale Purdue. And then their Super Bowl MVP quarterback Drew Brees, who worked with low income kids in the PALS camp, which stands for Purdue Athletes Life Success. At the end of the year, Breeze was named AP Male Athlete of the Year and Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year. And okay. she curls one in there. Purdue students also received national recognition in 2010. For the first time in the history of Purdue, the women's golf team reached the pinnacle of success by earning the NCAA National Championship, edging the University of Southern California by one stroke. Came in here, stole set number one, and then dominated sets two and three. The volleyball team also excelled in 2010, reaching the Elite Eight level in the NCAA tournament. Position, they threw it right to Mingo. Mingo down to Rayburn. Rayburn's got to step on the defense and lays it in. The women's basketball team got off to a strong start in the 2010-2011 season, capturing the preseason WNIT championship against DePaul. In the 2009-2010 WNIT tournament, Purdue lost in the second round to Illinois State. The men's basketball team was flying high in 2009-2010 until one of its star players, Robbie Hummel, went down with an ACL injury in February. The team advanced to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament before falling to Duke. Hopes were high for 2010-2011 but Hummel injured his ACL again in October. Even so, the team was still looking good, such as here against Penn State. <laughs> Purdue fans gathered at an Indianapolis restaurant prior to each Big Ten tournament game to cheer the Boilers to victory, though the team lost in the semifinal round to Minnesota.
Football injuries took a big toll on Purdue in 2010 as the team struggled to finish 4-8. and eight. But senior defensive end Ryan Kerrigan became the first Boilermaker since 1980 to be named unanimous first team All-American. Alumni gathered to Boiler Up prior to each football away game, including this Alumni Association event at Notre Dame. The chance to dance on Dancing with the Stars has been a huge opportunity for us. Alumni got a chance to cheer on another Purdue team on television in 2010. Eight students from the Latin and Ballroom Dance Team competed in May on ABC's Dancing with the Stars. I guess it's science and gross. Discovery Channel's Dirty Jobs came to campus to experience the unsavory side of forensic entomology. They're related to spiders. They have eight legs. Boilermakers took over a large section of the Indiana State Fair on Purdue Day, and bugs were the highlight for some of those in attendance. Also in Indianapolis, the Indiana Black Expo gave Purdue a chance to interact with thousands more. The Purdue Black Alumni Organization reception gave alumni a chance to relax after the expo while enjoying good food, good music, and good friends. It's a great university that goes far beyond just engineering. Purdue lost a good friend in 2010 with the death of the university's eighth president, Arthur Hansen, at the age of 85. Hansen led Purdue from 1971 to 1982. He was the only president to be an alumnus. The three presidents who followed him each spoke at his memorial service. So when I was approached about following him in this presidency, I called him in Texas to ask his advice. He said, take care of our people, invest in them, and foster the creation of new knowledge. Art Hansen has made many, many contributions to higher education, and Purdue in particular. Two stand out in my mind. Art began serious private fundraising at Purdue. He recognized the potential and he recognized the need. Art's presidency emphasized the importance of a rich and supportive environment for students. All of our students uh, from the 1970s to the present have benefited from Art's work in his lifelong commitment, not only to higher education, but to them. We honor that legacy by continuing what he began. Attention. <laughs> Cordova also spoke at the dedication of the new boathouse for Purdue Crew. This is really beyond wonderful. It's truly amazing. Co-curricular activities such as crew help build character, develop leadership skills, and provide opportunities for learning outside the classroom. The 22,000 square foot boathouse will be used by nearly 180 student athletes as well as members of the community. Electric transportation surged at Purdue in 2010, highlighted by the first ever electric vehicle, or EV Grand Prix. 17 electric powered carts hummed around the track for 80 laps. On straightaways, the vehicles approached 45 miles per hour. The event signals Purdue's leadership in the emerging world of electric vehicles. And these carts are on a smaller scale versus the new electric cars coming out. So the more we understand, we, we can apply it later on in life if we are in the automotive industry. The greatest spectacle in college racing, the gas-powered Grand Prix was held as usual in April. It was won by a team from IUPUI. The race began with a crash that included our camera. Luckily, our videographer was not hurt. So you just plug it right into either 115 volts or 230 volts, whichever is available. Carts are not the only vehicles being powered by electricity at Purdue. Two students spent the summer turning a Porsche into an electric-powered vehicle. The car was featured in Purdue's Green Week transportation show. Three fall events brought alumni back to campus. One was the Alumni Championship Golf Outing. It's awesome to be back. Because Alumni club leaders returned to campus in the fall to learn how to make their local club shine. An expression of academic talent. To honor alumni scholarship winners and to hand out some important awards. The 2010 Outstanding Young Alumni Award went to Catherine Amick for service to the St. Joseph Valley Club and Ken Sam for his work with the Kansas City and Memphis Alumni Clubs. It was certainly a different experience. With the alumni leaders in town, it gave students in the Purdue Alumni Student Experience a chance to meet and talk with the club leaders. Hail, hail to old Purdue, our friendship machine ever lasts.
The class of 1960 was well represented at its 50th reunion dinner in the fall. And reamers from that class showed that they still have spirit as they sang by the Lion Fountain. The third big fall attraction for alumni was, of course, homecoming. Festivities began with the annual night train parade. On the morning of homecoming, fans visited booths from dozens of different areas of the university. They also joined President France Cordova as she led the All-American Marching Band to ross -Aid Stadium. After football season, the 373-member band got to strut its stuff before a national TV audience as Purdue led the 2010 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade through the streets of New York City. Purdue's was the first Big Ten band to be invited for this annual extravaganza. Celebrating a Nobel Prize, celebrating our greatest heroes in flight, celebrating a Super Bowl MVP and a national championship women's golf team. Oh, and an historic appearance in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. 2010 was a remarkable year for Purdue and her people. It's been a pleasure of the Purdue Alumni Association to highlight it for you. Loyalty lives here, and hail Purdue. Hey.